ANC meeting. Uh, we begin. We begin our day today with uh, comments. We, some some uh, introduction here. Uh, I would like to remind everybody uh, that written comments may be submitted uh, to RDA offices via uh, mail, PO Box one four five four seven six, Salt Lake City, Utah eight four one one four, or by email email uh, at council.comments at slcgov.com, or you can also call uh, our phone line 801-535-7654. Thank you everybody, everybody here to joining uh, this meeting, those in person and those online. Uh, we, before we move on uh, on the agenda, I want to mention uh, and remind everybody of our, our rules of decorum, uh, which are in place to ensure our meetings move along well. Uh, and help everybody feel comfortable sharing their comments. A copy of the full rules of the quorum are available at the door and our staff will post the link in the WebEx um, chat. Uh, Scott Corpony, uh, Corpony uh, from our staff is helping to moderate the meeting. Online it will help message uh, those attendees to coordinate um, to coordinate any questions or commenting uh, on, on the registration. Staff is handling a number of tasks. Please limit uh, messages to technical issues and minimal changes to your registration. Taylor Hill on our staff will be calling the names of those who wish to comment. We will call names of people joining on WebEx and in person based, based on the order of registration or receive, uh, of when we receive the comment cards. When it, when it is your turn to speak, Taylor will announce your name. For people in WebEx, she will unmute your line and you may begin. For people in person, please st step to the podium and you, uh, you might wear a mask if you wish, uh, but if you remove it, it will make it easy to, to, to hear you. Once you begin, please state your name and your two minute timer will start. Uh, we, uh, we will now open our general comment period. Taylor, please start our first comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It looks like there is no one registered to speak to general comment. Is there anybody here who wants to? Okay. Um, we have no public hearings today, so we're going to move to the agenda item C1, which is redevelopment agents, agency business. Uh, we need a motion on the minutes. Mr. Chair, M Mr. Chair I move for approval of the minutes. We have a second. We have a, a motion by um, Board Member Mano and a second by Board Member Dugan. I'm going to call the question. Um, Board Member Petro? Yes. Mano? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Baltimoros? Yes. Dugan? Yes. And just want to confirm, do we need to state the dates of those meetings? Okay. Yes. And uh, we have uh, that's six to, uh, w with one absent, uh, Board Member uh, Wharton. Uh, we're moving to uh, item C2, resolutions amending two Utah Performing Arts Center interlocal agreements. At the table, we're going to have maybe Danny Waltz, maybe not, uh, Allison Park, Senior Attorney, and Lucas Woodridge, RDA Project Coordinator. Great, thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. As part of the joint operations of the George S. and Dolores Dory Eccles Theater, the RDA, Salt Lake City, and Salt Lake County entered into two separate interlocal agreements in 2013. The first interlocal agreement uh, creates and sets forth the formation and obligations of the interlocal entity called the Utah Performing Arts Center Agency, also known as UPACA. And the second interlocal agreement entitled the Utah Performing Arts Center Operating Agreement details the terms of the management and operation of the Eccles Theater. When the operating agreement and the interlocal agreements were initially executed, the parties agreed that they would maintain <clears throat> and contribute to a capital reserve account due to cost increases, as well as a shared desire to uh, continue maintaining the theater at a first class manner. The parties wish to increase the annual contribution to the capital reserve account. Pursuant to section 8.8 .8 of the operating agreement and pursuant to section 15F of the interlocal agreement, the parties desire to enter into the fourth amendment of the operating agreement and the second amendment to the interlocal agreement to increase the capital reserve account limit from $850,000 to $1 million. 
The UPACA Board of Directors and Salt Lake County Council recently voted and approved the amendments to both interlocal agreements and in accordance with the terms of the interlocal agreements as well as the Interlocal Cooperation Act, the RDA Board of Directors may consider approving these proposed amendments through the resolutions you have before you. Uh, unless there are any questions uh, from the materials that you received beforehand and my brief recap, we would look to the board to approve the resolutions associated with both amendments uh, and just a, a note, similar action will need to be taken by Salt Lake City Council on behalf of the city in the near future. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes. So logistically, and I think we kind of went over this in our chair vice chair meeting, but I don't know that we've did Determined a final answer. Do we, as a board, approve it here? And then is this the one that we need to approve in a formal meeting later as the council? Is that right? I see heads shaking, but there is a recording, so if you could please use your voices. <laughs> we will use our voices, yes. <laughs> that was the attorney. Yeah. Me. <laughs> to There's create a record. A record. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so both bodies will need to take action and vote. So um, today, this item's before you to consider and potentially take action and approve the resolutions on behalf of the RDA board. And then I believe we're on the work session agenda today for you all to consider and then potentially take action at a later council meeting. At a but, or because we have to do that at a formal meeting. Yeah, and I believe that's later in February, but the city council as a, the city council body will need to take action to approve the resolutions. Got it. Nothing about you, Packet, is straightforward, so it makes sense <laughs> that yeah. we would be going through all sorts of circles. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> any comments, any questions? Just, just one quick question. So this is going from 850 to, to a million. Is this... Uh, are we, is this going to be a recurring theme on in the future? Yes. yes, this would be the annual contribution as part of the budget for UPACA. Uh, and it should be noted that this is one of the carve-outs in the waterfall of how the funds flow. This is one of those initial carve-outs, so ultimately it does impact and reduce what is available later on as a revenue distribution. But. So we need a, is anybody else? And we need a motion. Someone, Mr. Chair, I move we move to uh, amend, approve the amendment of the uh, Utah Performing Arts Center interlocal agreement. Second. We have a motion by Board Member Dugan and a second by Board Member Baldemoros. I'm going to call the question. Um, Board Member Petro. Yes. Board Member uh, Dugan. Yes. Board Member Mano. Yes. Board Member Baldemoros. Yes. Board Member Fowler. Yes. And I'm a yes. That's six to uh, zero, and absent, uh, absent is uh, board member uh, uh, Wharton. Thank you. I just wanted to confirm that that was the motion for the interlocal agreement or for the operation agreement. Are there two? Yes, there are two agreements and two resolutions. Uh, yes, for both, both uh, amendments for the interlocal agreement and the... Um, Operational upgrade. Operational upgrade, yes. Thank you. And we need a, 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 the second okay with that. <coughs> but, uh, board member Baldemoros, you're okay with the changes on the, yes, okay. Thank you for the clarification. Yes. This is very, going very smooth today. Um, <laughs> so let's uh, move on to, uh, um, so it, will that wrap up uh, item C2, correct? Um, we're going to move to item C3, uh, resolution State Street. Uh, community reinvestment area uh, budget amendment. On, on the table, it will be Lauren Parisi, RD, RDA Senior Project Manager, and McKenna Hawley, RDA Project Manager. All right, thank you so much. Um, McKenna is online today. Um, and I do have a few slides if we could pull that up. Okay, we can move to the first slide. So again, this is the budget amendment for the State Street project area. Um, here, kind of for the benefit of the public, we have an image of the project area. And notices were mailed to each of the property owners within these boundaries regarding the budget amendment um, and that a public hearing is tentatively scheduled for next month. Next slide, please. 
So now that um, interlocal agreements have been finalized with each participating taxing entity, including the city, um, the county, and the school district, state re code requires that we amend the budget um, that was originally included as part of the adopted plan in 2018 to reflect the final terms of each of those interlocal agreements. So at a high level, the major changes to the budget include a reduced collection period from 25 to 20 years, and this was um, at the request of the participating taxing entities. Fewer taxing entity participation, so we have three instead of kind of the longer list of, of um, taxing entities. <laughs> And then finally, updated tax increment projections that reflect denser transit-oriented development um, that we anticipate to see in this area. So those are the three kind of key changes that this amendment uh, reflects. Next slide, please. Looking at the numbers, the total tax increment that we anticipate these three taxing entities will generate in the State Street CRA is approximately $140 million over the 20-year term. Next slide. And then of that total, the RDA is authorized to receive up to approximately $95 million and if, if that is generated. Next slide. Actually, I think that's it. So that's really all I have for you. And that, if you, let me know if you have any questions. And we ask that you consider schedule the public scheduling the public hearing for next month. Board members, any questions? Uh, I, I just just as a reminder for me, um, this is a result of the county and the negotiations with the county, correct? And uh, the county finally participating on this RDA well it's not it is that but it's not just the That's county because we the other there's some other changes that were made to the budget as well like the shorter um, term period the projected increment um, so it does reflect changes um, that were made by the county and then the more holistic changes as well okay and uh, okay that's wonderful thank you any any other questions here on the board yes. from the board Mr. Chair, I just may say thank you. This is, I, I, I know I did this before, but every <laughs> time this comes up, I'm going to do this because this has been so long in the making and it has taken hours upon hours upon, I can't even imagine how many hours of work from all of the RDA staff, several of our own council staff, um, Ben and Jen have meetings that we shouldn't have had to be in, um, but we're in doing all of this and working with the, the, the county and the, enti the other entities. And when you look at the projections and think, like $140 million, that's pretty amazing, right? And, and you know, I know that's a projection and we never know when the world's gonna shut down again or things like that, but it, I am so grateful for the work that RDA does and when we create these project areas and trying to literally be in meetings for hours and explain to people why these are good things and then you get to be like, because what we're hoping for is another $140 million invested into this community. Like, it's mind blowing to me. And I get, I, we do it in all of our project areas. This one has been particularly fun, in air quotes. Um, and I just truly want to thank all of the RDA staff and, and the council staff that when basically wanted to bang our head against walls a lot of times um, and walk me off the ledge many, many times in those meetings. Um, so thanks for being there, Jen, and thank you guys for this. Thank you. I think that's it. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. I don't know if there's any updates from the executive director item C4. Sorry, my microphone was off. It doesn't seem 
they don't seem to have any updates from the executive director. I um, will go into item C5, uh, an report on announcements from the RDA stuff. Danny at the table. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have uh, three items to update the board on, and I will apologize in advance. These are a little bit lengthier than my normal updates, but we'll get through it and get comfortable. Uh, the first is regarding uh, update on the HTRZ application for project area. HTRZ, as you know, is the project area's housing transit reinvestment zone. Um, update that RDA staff is still working on that application. Uh, we're looking at presenting one for the half mile radius around the 900 South, 200 West tracks station. We're looking to submit this to the governor's office of economic opportunity within the next month. Uh, you'll recall from our initial briefing that staff uh, moved forward with sending out a survey to uh, property owners within the area to determine what parcels to include within this application. From that survey, we received information about 40 acres uh, worth of development. As we are looking to fulfill our vision of a development and uh, neighbor -wide, neighborhood wide benefit uh, within the HCRZ project area, we are also looking at what additional parcels we may wish to include that we maybe not have heard details on, but we anticipate developing over the life of the project area uh, and increase the impact of the, the overall HCRZ area. Uh, the information we received from that survey included proposals that range everywhere from uh, housing, market rate, and affordable office, life sciences, commercial, hotel, and even some industrial. So uh, we are looking right now at how to structure this project area and the use of the funds to incorporate neighborhood revitalization and make sure that it's really targeted towards transient or transit-oriented development. Always get those conflated. Uh, and also, uh, what level of public projects we can include. This ranges everything from the Grand Boulevards to the Green Loop to tracks extensions to uh, our own affordable housing and sustainability, public benefits, and then also just uh, the level of neighborhood infrastructure that we can support within the budget. So right now, all of this is to say we are continuing to work on developers to finalize the information uh, and really figure out how we're going to find that balance between uh, within the budget of funding their projects as well as public benefits. So that we hope to wrap up over the next couple weeks and submit that application. So uh, if anyone would like additional information on that, please don't hesitate. We're happy to, to sit down and talk through any of those details if, if you'd like. Mr. Chair? Yes. Question. Thanks, Danny. What address did you say that you're going to go for? It's the 900 South, 200 West track station that okay. is then the half mile radius beyond that. So by RDA, like a previous... RDA. Uh, it, it overlaps significant portions of the West Temple Gateway project area and then also goes and that, into the granary a little bit. Okay. What about, what about the one that it's kind of like a given, the one on 600 West and 2nd South, the one that... Uh, we, we will begin working need, on what is that application okay. around the depot, the intermodal hub. Intermodal yes, hub. we still plan on working on that and okay. submitting one there as well. This is just kind of the first one out of the gate. Okay. And then anything in the granary area specific to the boulevards? Because this one is not at this five time. blocks away from the 600 South or 500 yeah, South. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you there. Uh, not at this time. Based on the information we received from developers and the projects that were identified, we, we were able to hit a lot of those developments just in and around this track station and didn't necessarily need to include a second one right now. Right. It's not to say we can't circle back on that, but this is kind of the first one initially that gets us uh, most of our priorities okay. and the properties that are talking to us and are interested in participating right now. I should also mention going back to the intermodal hub, um, you'll recall as part of the original legislation, there's a cap on doing eight of these HTRZ project areas countywide, mm -hmm. uh, with the exception of anything around an intermodal hub does not count towards that cap of eight. So that's another reason why that one is second in line versus this one. And would this, the 900 South 200 West one, would that reach all the way, or maybe the intermodal hub, reach all the way to 5th South and um, Fourth West area, and the reason why it's because we just the the groups that was going to do the silos mm -hmm. to you know to redo the silos and do affordable housing, they withdrew the application. We said okay, we'll take the money back during last meeting. Um, so now the base, yeah, right, it stays as is because it's not it's not going to be developed anytime soon. Or I'm not sure if they have a new plan. But will that area reach like this area? Will that encompass? 
It picks up a significant portion of that overall okay. industry development, but uh, I will get a map and confirm exactly okay. how far into it it goes to see if it picks up the properties you're referring to. Okay. And, there, and the reason why is because the le you know, before they start doing anything is where the, the price point is, I guess, like the base point. So yeah. if they're not going to do anything, let's capture that anyway. Yeah, the, the legislation does uh, indicate that if you even just clip a corner of a parcel, you pick it up. So I don't no, know okay. if we, how they've split their parcels or if that one fits, but I will send that yeah. to you and circle back. Thanks. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, uh, sorry, I had like three thoughts going on in my head at the same time. So uh, just a really quick question. HTRZs, the statute doesn't, we don't have to involve other taxing entities. The, the, the way the HTRZ legislation is written, you submit your application to the Governor's Office of Economic Opportunity. They form a committee which does include some of the taxing entities, but that approval by that committee then automatically includes the tax right. increment from those entities. Okay. And Mr. Chair, I'm wondering if after some of this, if on a future RDA meeting, if maybe we could go back and kind of have an HTRZ briefing of just what it looks like, what the, the statute looks like, and some of the project areas that are being considered for it. Um, and I think through the RDA may be the best way to have that briefing, I think. I'm kind of looking out into the audience of people that are smarter than me, <laughs> like, but, <laughs> like Danny and Jen, of... But it seems like there might be more questions than just a, an announcement where we're like, oh, yeah, all these things that maybe we kind of are thinking about. I think that would be very useful. I mean, it's been months since last time we talked about HTRCs. I, um, I remember they were very interesting at the moment, and we're trying to figure out how to do them. And I knew it was going to take quite a bit of work for your staff. So I would like to know, after you're submitting this one, um, how did that go? What do we learn uh, for maybe applying for new ones too? So that would be very useful for the staff, uh, for us. So maybe we can put that on a future chair, vice chair agenda, whoever's taking care of a list of that, we would, looking into the ether. We would be happy to provide uh, that, one. that refresher, lessons learned, and then uh, timing wise, uh, we could probably also do that as an update to any changes coming out of this year's legislation that might yes. be important to have to. That was, okay. that was the first one. item. There you go, right? Okay. I told, hey, there is no more comments. For, <laughs> okay. Real easy stuff today. Um, next item is just a follow-up on what was on last month's agenda regarding the NOFA um, notice of funding uh, uh, availability. Uh, sorry, I know I got that wrong. Um, in terms of what you as a board approved as some of those funding allocations. We wanted to circle back with you and indicate that uh, it came to our attention that there is a difference uh, between the affordability breakdown of units for one of the projects, the Liberty Corner project, uh, specifically regarding the information that was provided in their application, their written application, was slightly different when, than what they were indicating in their pro forma. This is probably just uh, a function of as they were working on their project having a difference there. Um, so uh, the project still met, meets all of the thresholds and requirements of not just the NOFA but our own housing development loan program guidelines, but we wanted to make you aware of the differences and just put those on the record. Uh, within the board packet, the information indicated that all of the units would be at 60% or below. Uh, however, the correct information in the pro forma should have shown that 78 of those 200 units we're actually going to be at 70 to 80 percent AMI. Um, it's important to note that all of the units will still average across the development at 60 percent AMI, and none of the bedroom mixes for the project changed at all. This was simply just a, a difference in how they were indicating their AMI levels between those two parts of the information. Uh, you recall the Finance Committee ranked this as um, Project 6 out of 10, you as a board, as part of that finance committee recommendation, approved 1.1 million of their $3 million request. Um, and so we have sent this information to the finance committee and reached out to all of those members. None of them indicated that this new information would change any of their rankings or recommendations to you as a board. So you approved those recommendations. Uh, we really just wanted to present this information and the nuance in just that discrepancy and what they had between those two sets of, of numbers and just make sure that if you had any questions or any concerns, we could address those. Um, 
but it, in talking to the attorneys and the finance committee, this would not have changed any of the final recommendations or uh, rankings. So any questions on that that I can answer? That was a lot, I know, I apologize. <laughs> and again, if anyone has any other questions and would like more information, we're happy to talk through that. And then finally, number three, real short, uh, groundbreaking is set for the Spark Project. Tuesday, February 28th at 10.30 a.m. We are excited to announce that. Uh, we have reached out to council staff, so hopefully that is showing up on everyone's uh, calendars. And so we are excited to see that project kick off. Uh, February 28th, Tuesday, 10.30 a.m. Two weeks. Should be warm by then. Any other questions or information we can provide? Doesn't seem like there's anything Excellent. from the board members. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. I, uh, I'm going to move on on the agenda. Uh, is uh, there's no written uh, items on um, on number D. Uh, there is there is an item on consent agenda. I need a motion. Yeah. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion for, from board member Petro and uh, a second by a f board member Dugan. I'm going to call the question, board member Valdemoros. Yes. Board member Dugan. Yes. Board member uh, Petro. Yes. Board member Mano. Yes. Board member Wharton. Yes. Board member Fowler. Yes. And I'm a yes. That's a seven to zero on that consent agenda. Um, I don't... Um, It seems like there is a close, uh, is there a close agenda? Okay, okay, we're gonna have to close. I need a motion to close, uh, close session. Mr. Chair, I move that we enter in, that we adjourn and enter, we enter into a closed and then adjourn after the closed session. I'll get it, one of these days, it's only been five years. Um, <laughs> Mr. Chair, I move that we enter into closed session for purposes of strategy discussion on the purchase, exchange, or lease of real property and attorney client matters. Second. A motion by board member Fowler and a second by board member Mano. Um, I'm going to call the question. Uh, board member Dugan. Yes. Board member Petro. Yes. Board member Baldemoros. Yes. Board member Wharton. Yes. Board member Mano. Yes. Board member Fowler. Yes. And I'm a yes. So we are in closed session right now. I think we're going to, we're not going to come back uh, to the RDA. That will be the end of the RDA meeting. And uh, this body will convene again as the um, work session for the city council a little later. Thank you.